As day breaks on the great African forest, the mandrels waken from the trees where they have spent the night. These forest-dwelling baboons live in families that contain as many as 50 within each group. Each group is led by a large male who makes the choice of trees to be used as sleeping quarters for the night. The dominant male will occupy an isolated tree or one well above the archway of the trees, while the rest of the group occupies their place according to a precise social structure, with the females and infants in the center, and then to the edges of the chosen site, the young juveniles in descending order according to age. They rise late, which makes the mandrel, a member of the Cercopithecid family, the most indolent of its kind. If it then rains, the wake-up time is postponed. If a violent rainstorm should occur during the day, the mandrel will climb back into the same trees and make them their daytime dormitory as well. The peculiarity of these primarily terrestrial primates is due to the ecological niche they occupy. As most baboons, the mandrills thrive on a varied diet and start the day in search of food. Such is the variety that they will not even scorn the young shoots of a razor sharp edged grass that is commonly found even in the smallest of clearings. They take delight in it, but handle it with all the care and prudence that these dangerous vegetables require. The juveniles will mainly seek tender shoots and buds in the trees, but they will also gladly feast on the many species of flowers, among them the upaka and the paduk. When they travel, the mandrels move in a protective formation. The dominant male signals the departure and the group proceeds under his protection. The females, and especially those with young, take refuge in the center of the group with the nursing infants holding onto the fur of their mother's stomachs or sometimes riding on their backs. If the group moves slowly enough, then the young are able to follow along. They will do so, but only within the safe quadrangle of the mother's legs. The more independent of the juveniles will escort the group by making a sort of safety belt around it, or will put on a display of great agility by following them through the trees.
Even if all the individuals within the group are positioned in such a way that they can walk as safely as possible, their cohesiveness is threatened by the reduced visibility of the undergrowth through which they may travel. To remedy this situation, the large males developed bright blood-red callositas on their hind quarters. These serve as a guide in the half-light. The members of the community stay in permanent contact with each other through a series of characteristic vocalizations, and especially through the deeper ones of the large males. They use these to rally the group as they roll. In the middle of the day, the group will often stop for a break. Most of the juveniles take advantage of this to rest themselves up in the trees. For a mandrel who will spend the greater part of its life in the company of its fellows and to ensure its survival, it is fundamental for it to behave in a social manner that will help it evolve within a coherent social group. This highly structured society with a clearly defined hierarchic system gives the group great stability. It is during rest periods when social interactions, often enhanced by mimicry, are used to maintain an equilibrium between individuals. For example, the act of displaying their hindquarters, originating from a behavior of the female to the male while in heat, is also a sign of submission from an individual of inferior rank to its superior. When they are sexually mature, the young males become increasingly solitary and walk along the very edges of their old group before founding one of their own. It is the dominant male that ensures the fertilization of the females, who are receptive once a month. The births occur throughout the year after a gestation period of seven and a half months. Giving birth to a single young at a time contributes to the survival rate of the sucklings who hang on securely to the hair on the mother's breast. If the female gave birth to more than one young, she would not be able to carry them as easily, and both she and her offspring could be left to the mercy of a predator. During the break, the dominant male will often stay away from the group. The cheeks and the ear markings are brightly colored and can be used as a guide for the other individuals in the group. The size of a large male's eye teeth depends on his age. He will show them occasionally while yawning but it is not necessarily a gesture of intimidation or even of boredom. It could be one of abandonment. 
when the individual is unable to accomplish his original intention. When a mandrel is disturbed, the hair on the nape of his neck bristles, and he stares at the intruder as he shakes his head. A friendly and playful disposition is expressed by the raising up of the lips. While a broad smile may mean non-aggressivity, the smiling mandrel may also be refusing to question the current hierarchic order. When threatening, a mandrel will shake his head and shoulders while staring at his adversary. It is rare that any conflict will end in a fight, because a sign of submission or retreat, since it will not weaken the group, is a better survival strategy. Nevertheless, in case of a fight between lesser community members, the dominant male will not hesitate to intervene to bring back order and show his superiority. Every group member takes part in long and frequent grooming sessions in which they remove each other's parasites. An individual can encourage another to start the grooming by making contact with its hindquarters and giving a short demonstration. Childless females will groom the mothers to distract them away from their young in order to play with them. This shows a healthy interest in the youngsters. This way, the babies are quickly introduced to the members of the group and learn their hierarchic position. But fur grooming is more than just an instrument for social cohesiveness. More obviously, it serves to keep the individuals free of parasites, since there exists in the mandrel's range numerous parasites, which can then be kept under control. The newborn will receive constant and attentive care from its mother and will display a great deal of natural curiosity. It then anxiously begins the discovery of its environment. The time comes when the juveniles find it difficult to nap and are no longer able to resist the temptation of playing with the other members of the group. As soon as an infant is weaned, 
it will stay away from its mother for increasingly long periods of time to play with the other young. As time goes by, its play consumes many more hours of the day, to the point where games become more important than its mother's company. In the protected atmosphere of a playgroup, the young social links with its partners widen and strengthen. Games serve to reinforce its agility and reflexes and to measure its strength against its fellows. The playgroup allows them to learn about every form of behavior they may require throughout their adult lives and create perfectly integrated members of the group when they mature. In the beginning of the afternoon, when the midday heat subsides, and when most of the juveniles are scattered around the group playing, the mandrels, in progression, start walking again to seek sufficient nourishment to carry them through until the end of the day. The tender shoots and leaves of different plants and creepers are frequently eaten by the mandrels. Their consumption is quite impressive, as it must partly compensate for the shortage of fruit that occur at certain times of the year. When it cannot find the fruit of the aframumum, a mandrel may pull the bark off the stem of the plant to consume the saprich medullary sheath. It will often eat the rhizome if it too has been pulled along with the stem. family group evolves within a territory whose outer limits are marked by the dominant male. But at certain times of the year, groups of up to 100 individuals may travel great distances in their continual search for food. When the shadows lengthen and start to darken the undergrowth about an hour before the sun sets, the dominant male climbs up into the canopy in order to choose a new sleeping site for the night. All the group members gradually settle down 
the mothers and their offspring near the dominant male, and the more boisterous juveniles take advantage of the dimming light to extend their activities. finally descends upon the group at sundown, a time when the whole community, now comfortably ensconced for the night, rest and patiently wait for the sun's rays to lighten the darkness from the ever-present lurking shadows of danger.